Hi Gabby, I'm in the UK. Hello, welcome back to Watch Like a Kid. Today is a very special episode of Watch Like a Teen because we're going to cover the new Netflix teen raunchy comedy Incoming. There's a pretty popular scene going around where Taco Bell is mentioned. Where do you live? Taco Bell. And I have not had Taco Bell and I can't even tell you how long. I had Taco Bell growing up, but I would literally always only order the Mexi Melt. When I went to go like order, I couldn't even find a Mexi Melt. So, so y'all tell me if this is like a mandala effect or if it's really just been that long since I've been to Taco Bell. That now they don't have Mexi Melts. So I got some Taco Bell and I thought it'd be fun to try some popular items for the first time while we talk about incoming. Don't worry, I'm going to edit out all the eating sounds because I hate that. I hate that. I'm gonna start with this Baja Blast because I'm really thirsty and I have heard a million and one things about this drink. It's fine. Sorry for the Baja Blast slander, but like it just tastes like a Mountain Dew to me. More tropical version of Mountain Dew. So Incoming is a movie about four boys. They're going into their freshman year of high school and they're really excited and they are, you know, ready to like grow up. They wanna be high school people now. They wanna be grown. They grown. Oh, these are grown girls, okay? The movie is rated R, so it's kind of confusing because it's definitely starring younger teens. They're like 14 years old, but the content is very much for older teens, so like 17 and up. Think super bad, think American Pie, that kind of thing. You know your kid better than we do, so our job is just to tell you what happens in the movie and you can decide if this is something you want your kid to see or not. Our main character's name is Binge, okay? He's not Ben, he's got a J at the end of the name, Binge. All right, movie opens up with him and he is really into this girl and he's like fantasizing about how he's gonna tell her that he's into her and he, you know, does the whole practicing, he's making out with the mirror. It's like hooked to his wall. And so when his sister comes in, he like, she like bangs him in the face. She kind of makes fun of him because he has to cover himself because of what's happened. She says it looked like he was effing the door. Our girl at Taco Bell, she put the Mexican pizza at the bottom. I asked our co-host Diane what her go-to Taco Bell orders were, and one of them was the Mexican pizza, and the other was the Crunchwrap Supreme. So I'm gonna try Diane's favorites first. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> what is this? It may not be pretty, but it might still taste pretty, so let's see. Zero out of 10. Guys, I don't know. We meet up with Binge's three friends. He's got Connor, Kush, and Eddie. We learn that Kush is about to throw a rager party. And by Kush, we mean Kush's older brother. Kush is not gonna be throwing a rager party, he's 14. Binge is excited because he's, he's like, oh, at this party, I can get the girl of my dreams. It's perfect. Connor's excited because he's like, oh, like I'm going to be able to like ball out. This is gonna be so much fun. And then Eddie is not very excited. He would actually just rather not go. Binge's friends start to be like, Okay, no way you're getting this girl. She's a sophomore. Like, no way. She's she's just so out of your league. No way you're getting her. And then just like, actually, I think things went pretty well one day when I was talking with her. We were giggling. We were laughing. It was great. But then this thing happened. And the thing that happened is homegirl's boob, like, fell out of her shirt. And it did. The movie did show that. So you see her, like, whole boob out, nip and all, right? But he doesn't say anything about it. So she gets upset. Like, why didn't you say anything? And then he saves it by saying, I just didn't want the conversation to end. Crunchwrap Supreme looks more promising. Hmm. It's a little better than Mexican pizza, but it's still not great. <laughs> this is a message for Diane and Diane only. Baby, what is this Taco Bell order? Fast forward to the party. The boys get there and Kush is like, oh, I'm so sorry. I can only have one plus one. Binge is the one who gets to stay because Binge has the most reason to be there. Connor is really upset about this because Connor was like, no, I wanted this, I needed this. Eddie's like, fine by me, <laughs> bye. <laughs> like Eddie is me in high school. You know, I like to be a theme girl and I didn't know what to wear for this movie. So I just wore what I would have worn probably at this party. Nobody gave us a hat look, but I would have. At the party, Kush takes Bench upstairs. We see that Kush has this big secret camera kind of situation. They're really, really rich. They're like at a mansion. There's a pool and there's many, many rooms. There's a spa. All the cameras are set up to where you can like see everyone at the party. And so he's kind of like scouting out 
which girl he's going to get with. All right, I'm in Astoria, Queens right now. And so I looked up what their most common orders are at Taco Bell. And you know, Queens, they keep it very demure. They keep it very demure. They just stick with the basics. So this is a Chalupa Supreme. This looks more promising than the other items we've got so far. No offense, Diane. This is good. It's not as good as it looks. <laughs> and then the party is basically what you would expect from a movie like this, only kind of maybe amp it up a little bit. Like don't think of them as 14, because remember this is really Kush's older brother's party. So these are older teenagers, maybe like age them up in your head. Drinking, smoking, drugs, vaping. There is one scene in particular at this party, I will say. <laughs> I saw kids on TikTok being like, this scene scarred me. I would just be prepared if your kid is gonna watch this and they're sensitive to scenes like this. Um, there's this one scene at the party where Kush is trying to tell Binge where his girl is that he wants to get with. Of course, because he has all these secret cameras, he knows where she is. So he's like, oh, like it's that door on the left or something. He opens up the door and of course it's two people having sex. And it's very like graphic. It's very brief, but it's like a thing. <laughs> and I think that that maybe for younger teens is just too much because I've heard them on TikTok like this was too much. <laughs> Did not like that scene. I would say that's the most like blatant sex that's in the movie. Um, there is like a lot of sexual jokes because it is a raunchy teen comedy. So there are a lot of sexual jokes. Some of them by grown adults. The adults in this movie are very strange. Eddie, the guy who's like doesn't want to be bothered with this party, his mom is dating this really creepy guy and he's always talking about how he's having sex with his mom. Eddie's mom, not like his mom. <laughs> and Eddie doesn't like it. And then there's a teacher who, he's a good teacher, he's a fun teacher, but I don't really know what, what his deal is, but he shows up at the party. Like they make a joke in the movie, like, oh, you know, you come to the party? And he's like, oh yeah, no. Cause like, you know, that's weird. <laughs> but no, he shows up, the man shows up at the party and he's talking to Benj and he's like, is it weird that I'm here? It's kind of like that one scene, am I too old to be here? Of course not. Does it look weird that I'm here? That's kind of like what the energy was, but weirder because yeah, you definitely should not be here. While the teacher is there, he's like, oh, well, I'll just like teach you guys while I'm here and then it'll be fine that I'm here. So he's teaching them about chemistry with alcohol. He's like doing shots with these kids. He gets really drunk. At some point he like gets caught on fire. Um, he gets electrocuted in the pool. I mean, a lot of stuff happens with this man. Like it's not good. And this was another queen's favorite. I think it's a like five layer beefy burrito or something. This might be a Meximo. This might be a Meximo. This isn't good, but it's comforting. You know what I mean? There is some violence in the movie. There are these guys who bought drugs off of the kid who gives Benj a ride to school. The drugs are just vitamin D, so they're not real, but he tells everyone they're real. They get into a fight with him at the party and it turns into this really big slapstick fight with like everyone at the party. Meanwhile, the two boys who weren't allowed to go to the party, Connor, the one who's like, I want a good fun night out, talks Eddie into stealing that like really weird guy who's dating his mom's um, car. He's like a really rich self-driving, I'm pretty sure, car. And they take it out and they get ice cream and they're having fun. And you know, Connor's like, let's just swing by the party. And he's like, no, like, I don't want to do that. He's like, come on, let's just, let's just swing by the party. So they swing by the party and this drunk girl, um, she's like the most popular, beautiful girl in the school. I think she's like an influencer. She's like really, really drunk. And the, her friends think that the car is the Uber. Friends throw this drunk girl in the car and these boys are like, what do we do? What do we do? So they ask, they're like, you know, where do you live? Like, like where do you live? Because they're just like, maybe we should just take her home. And this is when the Taco Bell scene happens. The girl says, I live at Taco Bell. The boys are like, no ma'am, you do not live at Taco Bell. She's like, you don't know me. I live at Taco Bell. So I also thought I would get this like Dorito thing because I was just intrigued. I think it's a Doritos cheesy gordita crunch. It's okay, I don't really taste the Dorito. So they take this woman to Taco Bell. She orders like a lot of food and she's eating it very sloppily. And you two boys are just looking at her like, this is so gross. Ugh. They find her wallet because she's still claiming she lives at Taco Bell and they find her address and they're like, let's just take her home. As they're taking her home, they start to smell something. And they're like, what is this? Like, what is, what is this? What, what is this? Homegirl has pooped all over herself. She like has diarrhea 
all over herself, all over the creepy man's fancy car, everywhere. It's disgusting. And you do see it and it is disgusting. And as they're like trying to flip her over, they get it like on their hands, they get it on their shirt and they're like really grossed out. So they pull over, they're like, what do we do? They end up just taking her back to Eddie's house and they like hose her off and they change her into like some of his clothes and they put her in the bed, which I'm sorry, I don't care how well I wash this woman, I would not be putting her in my bed. Cinnabon lights. That's really good. Meanwhile at the party, you know, normal party stuff, Benj actually gets his moment with this girl and she kisses him and he's all really excited about it. Um, but then <laughs> things in for him when she sees him snorting something in his nose off of a girl's stomach. He thinks it's Coke, but it's not Coke. It's, I'm gonna say ketamine and it messes him up. And so he's all drugged out. He's like, you know, on the sofa, people are like drawing stuff on his face. He's like really messed up. Kush is still trying to get laid and he has brought this girl into the spa of his mansion, kind of pretends like they're locked in there. They're about to like get in the hot tub. He has his shirt off and he has like bruises all over him and she's like what's going on and he's like oh i have an older brother so we know that his older brother is like really mean, mean to him on his way to the hot tub he like slips and he falls and he like breaks his collarbone <laughs> so he ends up at the hospital with benja's sister who got punched in the nose they have a little heart-to-heart -heart conversation and kush realizes that like he was in the wrong he totally deserves that he shouldn't have done that and i really actually appreciate that scene because I don't know. It's like sometimes I'm like, do these boys know like what they're doing? I'm glad that he acknowledged like that was not cool. That was messed up. They're at this assembly and I don't know why, but they give Benj the mic and Benj starts professing his love to Homegirl and he sings her a little song and Homegirl is like, no, we're not going to be together. This is ridiculous. What are you doing? Of course, everyone in school is like, ooh, you know, embarrassing. They on their way out, she kind of winks at him like, no, but we're like, we're going to be together or whatever, which... I don't like that behavior, but he's probably gonna be in love with her for the rest of his life. This is nacho cheese and chips, I guess. The chips are like really good. <laughs> the nacho cheese reminds me of like back in the day when you used to go to like the movie theater or something and get nachos. That's pretty much the movie. Again, the tone is kind of confusing because it just has a lot of content that's really made for older teens, but I don't really see older teens being interested in watching this one. Like it seems like a movie that a younger teen would think is funny and would like, but just with content that I guess kind of scars them, <laughs> depending on depending on who they are. There is language of all kinds, F word, all the words. There is violence. The violence is slapsticky. I wouldn't be too concerned about the violence. There's drugs. I will say the drugs are kind of mostly painted in like a negative sense. Like when he does snort that stuff, it kind of makes him lose his girlfriend. And then also, he just like has a terrible time. <laughs> He's like not enjoying himself. There's drinking. There's really weird adults being really weird around minors. There's that one sex scene where he runs in on them having sex. There's nudity, the girl's boob. There's a lot of sexual jokes and sexual like language. If your kid is like really sensitive to things like that, probably not for them. But if they're okay with it, then they might enjoy it. It's funny. It's not like horrible. It's not like the best, but it's not like horrible. I don't think it's going to be a classic. But again, it's not horrible. By the end of the movie, I actually found that I had a good time with it. I was laughing at certain parts, especially the parts with the two boys that couldn't get into the party. I think they were like my favorite part of the movie. I don't think it's something that your kid like should feel FOMO about not seeing. <laughs> I can't think of any standout jokes that are gonna come from it and become part of culture except maybe to talk about them. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let us know. You can just comment below or you can email us and we will be happy to answer them. If there's another movie, TV show, book, album, literally anything that you want us to cover, let us know. All right, ranking this Taco Bell. My favorite, I think, I think my favorite is this Chalupa situation. Favorite. I think my second favorite, these were good. Then my third favorite, Wannabe Mexi Melt. Fourth favorite, Chalupa Supreme. Fifth favorite, probably this like Dorito situation. The last favorite was the Mexican pizza. I don't really know where to put the chips and nachos. Actually, they'd probably be around like in the middle. If I had to reorder anything, it would probably just be this Chalupa and these like cinnamon bite things. I hear there's like a slushy version of this. I bet that does hit. I would not be living at Taco Bell. But I hear a lot of people really do like Taco Bell, so.
please don't come for me. I'm so sorry about the Taco Bell slander. I know, I know it's not for me. I'm very sorry. Um, justice for Mexi Melts. That's not a unicorn. That's just a pony with pink hair.